Coming up next on the Sports Center, Ray Perkins said he believed Bama never, but Tampa Bay is calling and never may have arrived. More bowling, this the freedom from Anaheim, California, UCLA against BYU. And more from Fremantle, Australia, as two semifinalists threaten to sink the competition. All this and more ahead on ESPN Sports Center. everyone and welcome to the ESPN Sports Center. I'm John Saunders along with Chris Berman and there's a change of address for a college football coach. A little too quick, John, for a lot of people's taste, that is for sure. We can forget all of those cute little denials going on the past few weeks by Alabama coach Ray Perkins and Tampa Bay Buccaneers owner Hugh Culverhouse. It's been learned that less than two days after Lehman Bennett was axed as Bucks coach, Perkins swooped in and tomorrow will formally accept a five-year deal to become coach, GM, and vice president of operations of the Bucks, as well as having an option to buy part of the team. The Bennett was fired Monday, then Monday night, Culverhouse flew to Birmingham to confer with Perkins, then continued his talks for several hours Tuesday. Then they both said no offer had been made. Obviously, that wasn't close. Perkins slated a press conference for tomorrow morning. Now that, too, apparently is a formality, and he will return to the National Football League for a second stint, the first, of course, being with the Giants. Leaving the job, he said he would never leave coach and athletic director at Alabama. One coaching change that won't happen is Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Paul Hackett going to USC as head coach. Hackett withdrew his name from our consideration Tuesday, saying he will stay in Big D for at least one more year. In Anaheim, California, the home of Mickey Mouse and the rest of the gang, the UCLA Bruins played Brigham Young in the Freedom Bowl. As it turns out, after this holiday, the Cougars may need a little bit of a vacation because this bowl game did not go their way. Over 55,000 on hand in Anaheim, third annual Freedom Bowl. UCLA takes over Matt Stevens to Gaston Green, hands off to Carl Durrell. Around the end on the reverse, he breaks a tackle, moves off to the races, 50 yards, gets it down to the three-yard line, almost takes it into the end zone. Then Gaston Green takes the pitch around the left end this time for the touchdown, beginning a big night for Green, 7-3 UCLA with the lead at the half. Third quarter, the Bruins blow the game wide open. Marcus Greenwood on the dive. They go for the fake. He breaks it outside, rambles 70 yards down to the six-yard line. That sets up another Green touchdown. The night belonged to Green as Laval Edwards doesn't like what he sees. He takes another pitch, heads towards the sidelines. No one's going to catch him this time. 80 yards on the touchdown. He had 261 yards on 33 carries and three touchdowns into the end zone there. But he's not through. He doesn't only do it on the ground. Watch this as he tosses a touchdown pass to Durrell for the 13-yard touchdown. Bruins roll to their fifth straight bowl game victory. 31-10 was the final. Green, 261 yards on 33 carries and three touchdowns. On ESPN, there was that rare scenario, a big underdog playing a bowl game in its own stadium. San Diego State tried to reestablish itself on the big-time football map in the Holiday Bowl against Iowa. And you say the Stars and Stripes forever? Well, they meant it tonight in San Diego. And the Holiday Bowl, certainly some explosions by both teams' offenses, except for right here. Mark Vlasic intercepted, trying to throw a touchdown pass. Mario Mitchell of San Diego State with a key interception with his team down 7-6. Second quarter, Aztec quarterback Todd Santos looking long, 44 yards. Where's the defense? Alfred Jackson, touchdown. San Diego State leads the Big Ten full Iowa 14-7. 14-13 later in the second quarter, Santos to Monty Gilbert. Watch him put the move right here on Keaton Smiley at the eight yard line. He's into the end zone, 28 yards. Hayden Fry says, wait a minute, folks. We're supposed to be leading, not trailing 21-13. First play of the fourth quarter. Mitch Burton throws the block. Chris Hardy, seven yard run, 35-21. Aztecs by 14, but the Hawkeyes are game. On fourth and four, Vlasic to Marv Cook. He could go all the way, 29 yards, two point conversion, it's 35-29. Later, Vlasic to Mike Flagg. Touchdown, 36-35. Hayden Fry up. Then Santos from the shotgun. Looking long. You know everybody's back playing defense. It doesn't matter. Jackson holds in it at the 10, setting up Kevin Rahill with a 22-yard field goal. And with under a minute to go with 38-36 San Diego State. But the big play against Denny Stoltz, Kevin Harmon on the kickoff return. 
All they wanted was to get him down somewhere in his own territory. Forget it. He's over the midfield stripe, deep into San Diego State territory. Then, the seconds to go. 42-yard field goal. Rob Houtland. Missed the PAT. Missed two field goals. Doesn't miss on the gamer. It's good. One of the most exciting bowl games you'll ever want to watch. The Holiday Bowl here on E. That's not Bill Parcells. How could, they, how could they be dumping stuff on him? That was Hayden Fry. Iowa beat San Diego State 39-38 as Vlasic threw for two touchdown passes, ran for one more, and that was a lot of fun. New Year's Bowl Notes. LSU defensive end Roland Barbe saw his appeal to play in the Sugar Bowl transferred from a Louisiana court to a federal court. He is still in limbo concerning the ban on him for that game due to positive steroids testing. Of course, that's the same scenario involving Oklahoma All-American linebacker Brian Bosworth in the Orange Bowl. Tuesday, a Norman, Oklahoma lawyer who has been involved in civil rights cases says he thinks that if the Boz challenged the NCAA in court, that the Boz would easily win. For only the second time in NFL history, the league's most valuable player award goes to a defensive player. Now that you know that much, you also know it could have gone to none other than linebacker Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants. Taylor led the NFL with 20 and a half sacks, leading the Giants defense to a 14-2 record and the NFC East title. Taylor was also named Defensive Player of the Year for the third time in his six-year career. The only other defensive player ever named league MVP was Alan Page of the Vikings. That was in 1971. Now, Taylor's win was a landslide. Here's the top five vote-getters. Eric Dickerson, a distant second. Dan Marino, Joe Morris, and John Elway were the only other players with more than one vote. In Chicago, William Perry may win this year's MEP award, most extra <laughs> pounds. The fridge has apparently ballooned to close to 350 pounds, and Coach Mike Ditka is not pleased. Ditka says the fridge will be in a different color uniform next year if he doesn't take the weight off. He adds he's really concerned about his health. The fridge's reply, if I wasn't healthy, I wouldn't be here. Last week, New York Jets coach Joe Walton made a gutsy move by going with backup quarterback Pat Ryan to snap the team out of its five-game funk in the wild guard game against the Chiefs. Would he come back with Ryan rather than Ken O'Brien this week against Cleveland? Well, Walton waited till Tuesday to make it official, but he knew he had to go with Ryan again. While the Browns are in Florida, it was the Jets who were working out in classic Northeast weather, and Ryan downplayed the renewed spotlight Tuesday at practice. Millie. You know, it's a football game's a football game, really. Um, I don't look at it any different. I'm not going to prepare for it any different. I have a lot of anticipation and antsiness and nervousness before every game, so I don't see where this Saturday be any different. Pat Ryan, of course, uh, in good shape right now. People forget that it was only a couple of years ago he was leading the Jets to that big start. And that's right. And he he obviously showed that he can throw the short to medium range passes with. A plomb. Is that a good word? Coming up next on the Sports Center, World Be Free may finally get a chance to be free of the Cavs and play with the Sixers. And also, Rocket coach Bill Fitch shoots down rumors of dissent in Houston. And in college basketball, Kentucky hosts Georgia in, of all places, Louisville and Freedom Hall. When a sculptor creates his most expressive work, he relies on the chisel. Its wedge shape gets into those tight spots no other tool can reach. Introducing the Schick Wedge, a shaving tool based on the same simple principle. Designed with a wedge-shaped head to get into those places that give round and flathead shavers real trouble. It's an age-old idea, but it's a new angle in shaving. The Schick Wedge. If you don't read the Wall Street Journal, you're saving a little time when you could be investing it. Call 800-372-3000 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.50 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.50. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. Take me back where I belong. Take me where it's safe and warm. The Goodyear Vector is the all-season radial that pumps water away to keep more tire tread on the road. And for some, that's a comforting thought. Take me home. Goodyear, take me home. Never matters how far I go. Goodyear, take me home. 
Saturday. See a live ACC doubleheader. First, North Carolina State's Wolfpack meets Maryland in an ESPN exclusive. Then, Tommy Emmerker leads Duke to the hoop against Virginia. It's all live Saturday on the network for college basketball, ESPN. Only three days ago, the Kentucky Wildcats were spreading ill will, beating up the Louisville Cardinals on their home court, Freedom Hall. Today, the Wildcats were back, this time spreading goodwill, playing one of their home games at Freedom. Kind of like the Bears hosting Dallas in Green Bay. <laughs> well, it was Kentucky up against Georgia, and it was an upset. Started to play good. Rex Chapman with the steal there, gets it to Ed Davener, 32-29, Kentucky with the lead, but Georgia finishes up strong. Tony Mack drives the lane, pulls up, hang time, hits the jumper right there, 36-29 to at the half, and Sutton is unhappy with what he sees. He'd be unhappier later. Georgia built a big lead. Kentucky comes back. Chapman with miss. Then Derek Miller on the baseline there. Hits the three-pointer. Miller hit five home runs for his 15 points on the night. A bit later, 45-40 to 40, Georgia. Davender drives the lane, hangs a bit. He gets fouled as well. Hits the free throw. So they're within two. Georgia's Hugh Durham a little miffed at this, but he'd be happier later. The Bulldogs back in it. Max hands. Mack delivered with a nice baseline drive as he turns it around, reverses it. 47-43. And then later on, they give it to him at the top of the key. He does it again, hanging in the paint. It drops. He finished with 24 points. There's Eddie Sutton, as I said, unhappier than he was before. Georgia wins it, 69-65. The upset of number 11, Kentucky. That game played at Freedom Hall. More top 20 scores now. Boston U up against Syracuse. The Orangemen with no problems, winning at 96-67. to Syracuse ranked number 7. Georgetown still undefeated this year. They're number 8. They take on Long Beach State tonight and win it by 14. Number 15, DePaul up against Pepperdine. In the second half, DePaul with a 6-point lead. Loyola of Chicago coming off a big victory over Illinois earlier this week. They're up again, number 19, NC State. NC State with the victory, easy, 97-85 win. And Northwestern gets clobbered by number 20, Duke, 106-55. to Last night in the semifinals of the Dallas Morning News Classic, number four, North Carolina, blasted number two, Purdue. Now, tonight, the heels fall in the finals may not have been on the same level of talent, but you know that SMU brought their home folks with them to potentially cause other problems, and did they ever? Carolina led it by eight at the half, but they went to overtime, tied at 81. And Carolina barely comes out of Dallas with a win, winning 88-86 in overtime. Oh, by the way, for third place, Purdue clocked the Tigers of Towson State 94-58. The seventh place game in the Rainbow Classic. I tell you, Kansas almost came out of Hawaii with a great tan, but 0 for 3. But they win in overtime over the Bows, 81-80. And the championship round of the Blade Classic also involving top 20 teams. That's number 14, Temple. And the Owls now 10-1 and one as they beat Toledo on their home floor 75-68. In the NBA, the Houston Rockets extended the contract of coach Bill Fitch for three years. A move that comes amid published reports that a pair of his Rockets players, Ralph Sampson and Mitchell Wiggins, were in essence tanking it in an effort to get him fired. Certainly an unsavory charge to say the very least. Fitch downplayed it. He's on for three more years. It's up to the players to play ball. World B. Free is ready to return to Philadelphia. Free has been sitting out the season in a contract dispute with Cleveland. Now, the Cavs have agreed to waive his rights to Philly in exchange for a second-round draft pick. Free started his career and played three seasons with the Sixers from 75 to 78. The 76ers, meanwhile, tonight on the road in Denver to face the Nuggets, and they pull away with the road victory up against Denver. Here, scrambling the Philly end, Fat Lever gets it, but throws it to Charles Barkley. He loses it, then gets it back, goes up, hangs in the air, bangs it off the glass, gets fouled as well. Three-point play, Philly up by one. Nuggets go to Alex English. English takes it for the runner, right-hander there for two. Doug Moe taking a look on right there. The Nuggets back up by one. Late in the game, Philly is up by one. English tries to field. Daryl Walker, but Mo Cheeks with the steal, takes the ball, goes coast to coast, hangs it off the glass for the lay-in, 109-106 Philly, Mo doesn't like it this time, seconds left, Dr. J taking the ball out, gets it stolen, Pat Lever for the tie, but the ball is swatted away by Dr. J, it winds up 111 to 108, the Philadelphia 76ers win on the road in Denver. A pair of Central Division teams both playing above 600 ball met in Milwaukee where the Bucks hosted Detroit in a nail-biter. Pistons looking good in the first half. Vinnie Johnson to Sidney Green. 
and he will do your basic look, Ma. No hands pass to Bill Lambeer. 56-49 Pistons at the half. Here come the Bucks. second half. Isaiah with the breakaway, but Ricky Pierce swats it off the glass. We go the other way. Paul Pressey to Terry Cummings. Lays it up and in. Bill Lambeer, your basic unhappy Piston as his team trails 88-84. And less than a minute to go, the Pistons by two. Isaiah hit the bad pass. Ricky Pierce comes up with it. No good. Cummings with the tip. We're tied at 97. Straight in bounding at half court. Watch Lambeer get the forearm shiver from Paul Pressey. They call a technical. Adrian Dantley with the tee. Hits it. Pistons 98-97. This time, though, inbounds pass work. Isaiah. And uh, that bucket kills the Bucks. Was that Red Auerbach? Well, no, not really, but it never. Give that man a cigar. Detroit won at Milwaukee. 103-99, only Milwaukee's second home loss in the last 15 games. Meanwhile, at New York, Bullets at the Knicks. First quarter, Mr. Bill Cartwright is on fire. 23 in the first half. Here he drove right past Manu Bull. Second quarter, the Knicks on the break. Jared Wilkins to Pat Cummings to Chris McNeely. Up and in off the glass. The Knicks lead it 50-47. Third quarter, Moses Malone goes to work. Watch Moses download. Not nah, yeah, that second time it works, Bullets by six. Fourth quarter, here come the Bullets again. Michael Adams gets the pass on the break. Hits John Williams. Williams hits. Fouled. Bullets by 10. But the Knicks looking to make it four in a row. Come back. Beautiful power move by Gerald Wilkins. Two of his 29 of the Knicks lead, 94-93. Then New York puts it out of reach. Stop. Pop. Yes, Gerald Henderson. The Knicks, can they believe it? Four wins in a row. Break them up. The Knicks beat Washington 103-97, matching their longest winning streak since the 83-84 season. That's almost back when they had a two-handed set shot. Indiana beat Cleveland 111-99 as uh, the uh, Pacers go past the Cavs out of the Central Division basement. Golden State beat Chicago in Chicago 102-99. Jordan only had 31. What do you expect? San Antonio snapped the six-game losing streak, beating Utah 115-109. Then late games in the NBA. Final, Houston has beat the L.A. Clippers in L.A. 105-102. Phoenix at Portland, where the Blazers are tough. Once again, they were. They beat Phoenix 120-105. Boston at Seattle in a nip and tucker. And the Celtics trailing by 10 in the fourth quarter. Come on to win it, 104-102. Fasten your seatbelt straight ahead on the Sports Center, a trip around the National Hockey League. And we will look uh, under the Saddle Dome at the Calgary Cup. A little Olympic hockey rehearsal. Well, some teams hope not. But first, let's run down some more. Looks like this is my company's best year ever. And next year could be even better for us if my key people continue to work as hard as they did this past year. So I do everything I can to keep them here and to keep them performing at their best. That's why I called in Transamerica Occidental Life. Transamerica showed me how to use life insurance to set up an executive bonus plan, a deferred compensation program, and what they call split dollar. I picked the programs I want and the people I want to reward and including me, of course. My key people are happy. So am I. Transamerica can do the same for you. And you know what? It costs less than you think. A lot less. You want your next year to be great? Do what I did. Call this 800 number now. Find out how Transamerica can put some life in your business. For more information, call 800-228-5505. That's 800-228-5505. Call now. Tuesday night at the Pucks. 
And a pair of teams going in opposite directions got together as Hartford traveled to Washington. Late first period, the Whalers on the move against Bob Mason in the Capitol Nets. Half of the Whalers, Dean Evans, with a cannonading blast. And the Whalers hit it one nothing after one. Second period, Whalers do a little hustle. Much Kevin Deneen worked very hard behind the net with the pretty center to Ron Francis. Makes no mistake, 2 nothing Whalers. Third period, that line again, Deneen Francis and Dave Semenko. Deneen with a pretty move around the defense, and he will score. This 18th goal, the Whalers lead it 3-0. Mike Leud has three shutouts already this year. It's only 86. He's looking for number four. But Scott Stevens shot from the point midway through the third period, tipped in by Craig Laughlin, and it's 3-1. But why has Leud been so tough, and the Whalers been so tough this year? Look at the beautiful save he makes on Dave's sister, Christian. And the Whalers end up clearing the puck, and the Whalers beat Washington by the score of 3-1, outshooting them 42-27. The Battle of Quebec goes the way of the Nordiques. They beat Montreal 6-3. Pair of goals for Michel Goulet and an assist. He has 22 now on the year. A couple of fights. Of course, Claude Lemieux involved with the Canadians going after backup Quebec goalie Richard Sevigny. Had just another night in the province. St. Louis got three in the first period. They gave Boston their fifth straight loss, beating the Bruins 4-3. The Norris Division of the NHL could be renamed the Feast or Famine Bunch, or how about the All or Nothing Gang? It's the only division of the league where you can go from last place to first place with a single victory. Two points separated five teams heading into tonight's play. And that's exactly what the Chicago Blackhawks did, jump from last to first in the island against the Islanders here, dominated the first period, Secord in front to Dave Donnelly, sweeps it past the goaltender, Chicago up 1-0. Sobe was invincible in the Chicago goal. Islanders a wild scramble, watch Sobe with a great save, then he falls on the puck. Chicago's up 2-0 at the end of one. Second period, Sobe again, another great save, two great saves right there, but Brian Trotte fights off the defender to make it 2-1. And later in the second period, watch Miko Makala splits the defenders, goes in alone on Sobey and flips it underneath him. That ties the game at 2-2. Chicago needs a goal, and Denny Savard from behind the net. Watch a nifty pass in front to Larmer. All in one motion, he flips it home. Chicago's on top 3-2. Early in the third period, Brown to Frazier, and Frazier lets a good slap shot go 4-2, and Bob Pulford likes what he sees. 5-3 is the final. Chicago now in first place in the Norris Division. The New York Rangers against the Pittsburgh Penguins, a Patrick Division battle. Podubny had two goals there. The Rangers win it. Penguins winless in eight. Calgary wins by one over New Jersey. Tonelli had two goals in that one. Philadelphia in Los Angeles. Dion, J. Wells, Wells, and Duchesne with the goals for Los Angeles as they lead over Philly. Edmonton, Wayne Gretzky with his 38th and 39th as they're up against the Vancouver Canucks. In an Olympic dress rehearsal, the Calgary Company Soviets undress the Americans. The final, the Soviets 10, the Americans won. They even had a fight in there, so it wasn't, uh, it was not Iceland revisited. And when John and I return on the Sports Center, we will go to the land down under where it's not winter and playing hockey, it is summer and they're sailing boats. Stay with us. to America's best as they look to Australia and the America's Cup Challenge. This bus for all that you do you got to stop to come through Along with the world But you're not alone It's your country's home It's all same with you You make America work And this fight's for you I'm Bobby Valentine, and I'm here to tell you all you get if you order Sports Illustrated now. I'm Terry Forster, and I'd like to order some more nachos now. Waitress. If you order Sports Illustrated now, you not only get the best weekly coverage of all your sports, you get the big baseball preview and the famous swimsuit issue, so you'll know what's new at the ballpark and the beach. Does it come with a salad? <laughs> no, Terry, it comes with great savings. Over 50% off the cover price. Just call this toll-free number now and save on 27 issues at the low basic rate payable and three monthly installments of only $9.79 each. Or if you prefer, use your credit card. What's for dessert? Terry included with the baseball preview is this handy Major League Baseball schedule free plus this video classic NFL Crunch Course. It's a big hit and it's free with your paid subscription. Free, huh? If you call now. Can I get a phone, please? Call 1-800-221-8100. Sports Illustrated, I'd like to order everything on the menu. Bobby, could you please pass me the swimsuit issue? <laughs> 